So here's the clip from MSNBC's Chris Hayes reminiscing with Adam Schiff about the good old days. Remember those good old days before coronavirus when we really thought we had him and we impeached him? Here is the clip. I wonder, Congressman, how you think about um, what happened a few months ago, uh, that, that, that episode which seems like all things on the other side of this fence in time of before and after the pandemic at the U.S. Well, there's one thing that really, I have to say, haunts me from that trial, and uh, it was uh, before that snippet that you showed, where we knew we had to answer the question to the senators, okay, essentially, House managers, you've proved him guilty. Does he really need to be removed? After all, we have an election in nine months. How much damage could he really do? And we, we posed that question to the Senate, and we answered it by saying that he could do an awful lot of damage. But frankly, Chris, I don't think we had any idea how much damage he would go on to do in the months ahead. There are 50,000 Americans now who are dead uh, in significant part because of his incompetence. Ah, so literally Adam Schiff said there, there are 50,000 plus Americans dead because of Donald Trump. I beg to differ. I mean, where's, where's the accountability? Where's the sentiment for somebody like, you know, Governor Cuomo or Mayor de Blasio or just anybody like that? You so know? coronavirus is caused by Donald Trump. There are 50,000 plus. By the way, it's actually well over 60,000 now. People are dead uh, because that was a clip from good old Schiff just only a week ago. Yeah. Um, but over 60,000 Americans are dead. And that is an awful thing. But Schiff, I don't like playing politics with people's lives. With like people's that. lives, it kind of it rubs me the wrong way. It's, you know, people people aren't even buried yet, and we're sitting here trying to assign you know who killed who, and it's they can't and, even have funerals. And, and, and I hate the the infighting and the in blaming, where it's like you know what party killed these people? It's like there's only one party that killed these people, and it's the Communist Party of China. Oh, well said, millennial. And then here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, he doesn't even Schiff doesn't even say uh, it was this group of policies. It was this. Um, group of issues. No, he says it's one person. That's what it, that's, and the person is the President of the United States. I literally think that this guy is, there's some mental health issue that Schiff has. I really believe that. Um, there was a period of time I just thought he was all political and there was nothing else. But after hearing this, I have to wonder the mental health of someone that isn't interested in solving what really is a global problem, and that is the rise of communism in China and the expansion and power of communism throughout the globe. I, I hear you, but I, I think I really do. I see somebody who is just so engrossed in the political theater and who lives to you know, play politics in the games. Because what is he? He sits in a D plus 30 something district in the middle of California. Where Explain what a, that is, D plus 30. D plus 30 means that there's a 30% the ratio, there's 30% more Democrats in the district than there would be Republicans. So and in an election, he's, he's likely to get um, a super majority very easily in order to get reelected. Basically, his, his toughest competition is in the primary. Is in the primary. Yeah, and once, once he's once, at the general, it's, he's a shoe in So he has shoo-in. absolutely no accountability to being any bit fair or you know, modest in the way he goes about his business. And he takes advantage of that to, to go on a lot of these you know, political crusades and, and you know, use his agenda to inflict political harm on his adversaries of the other party. And, and it's not like, you know, I mean, I, yes, the Democrats and somebody like Schiff are more willing to use impeachment on Trump because if you talk, if you look at the way the popular culture is, it's it's the woke or cool thing to do because nobody particularly likes Trump in, in the popular media. But a lot of this is, this is age old tactics. I mean, you know, they did the same thing in the second term of Bush. It was, you know, investigation after investigation and how we handled Iraq. And, you know, for the most part, you can even say sometimes Republicans did it in the second half of the term of Obama's last term with, you know, looking at Benghazi and things like that. But, you know, Schiff is somebody who is so, he just loves it. He is what, so what willing. What do you think, though? Wouldn't you think that if you're Adam Schiff, that really your first priority would be, you know what we should do? We should really have hearings to investigate. China? What happened? What happened? How how it got out of China? I would wait till this what is happened? all done first before we start going on, you know, TV and talking about it. You know, let's let's get through this. My this first focus would be how how can how can the House put together a good proposal to address a lot of the systemic needs going on right now? I gotta wonder like too. Does, and, does Nancy Pelosi, uh, Garrick, does Nancy Pelosi have to rein Adam Schiff in? I mean, no, just, I think he's he's her mouthpiece. You, you, I think okay. she. I think the two of them are in the same page, and that he is just carrying forward her message. It's fast. I mean, obviously, they're both from California, but I really wasn't sure whether or not they actually got along. 
Um, and maybe he was just positioning himself to be the House majority leader, hoping that you know he can keep pushing her along, saying, you're not doing enough. That's what we need to do. We need to impeach again. I sometimes wonder, I mean, I've read a, di a bunch of different articles that kind of suggest that, but I'm not really sure. I, I'm not. I'm not sure the dynamic. To me, it just seemed like they were they were pretty reasonably in tow. I mean, they say a lot of the same stuff over they do. and over again. She she says exactly. I agree. Yeah. She does say the exact same to that, thing. To that clip, though, they're talking about impeaching him again. I, uh, you know, I just wonder. You know, do I get the courtesy of of seeing um, what's his name from New York? Oh, I can't think of his name again. He he was the one who the small guy. Oh, Jerry Nadler. Jerry so I get, Nadler. So I get he's not a Jerry. small guy, by the way. Well, he used to be. He's oh, been he's enormously small fat. And, small and yeah, height. He's, he's, small he's short. And height. He was short and fat for a long time, and now he's just short. <laughs> I'll tell you what. One of the things, though, I don't really know that American people want to go through a second round of it. Because when he was sitting there talking about, and we were listening to the clip, I was sitting there, and all I could think of was is that I don't remember that line of questioning in the hearings because, quite frankly, I didn't watch after the second day because... <laughs> Because it was so dull. It was the same stuff that they had been talking about. But for there were a months. lot of people. Can I tell you something? I was in a restaurant and they had a, a bar off to the distance. And the restaurant was in a very blue area. And I saw a bunch of people glued to CNN. Because, of course, that's the channel that they had that on they had on in yeah. the bar. And they were glued to the hearings. And you could tell they were so invested in seeing an election overturned. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's fascinating that people are so um, uninformed that they think that impeachment actually means that you were removed from office. They, yeah. <laughs> they don't understand. I remember that, the House, the House <laughs> announcement. Yeah, we impeached the president. Everybody's like, thank God, he's finally gone. And yeah, it's, it's like, that's like, ah, not how that works. Yeah, he's <laughs> not actually gone, guys. <laughs> he's a bicameral legislator, people. <laughs> <laughs> so MSNBC, that was Chris Hayes. And he was reminiscing with Adam Schiff. We have a second part of that interview with MSNBC, uh, Chris, is, Chris Hayes, and interviewing Adam Schiff. And they talk about, and they actually say, Trump is fatal to the American people. Yeah, Trump is fatal to the American people. You can't believe this. It's just almost, like, disgusting. But here we go. Here is the clip. I don't think we would have ever anticipated that his brand of narcissism and his brand of incompetence Sometimes his brand of malevolence would be so fatal to the American people. But probably, you know, the, the strongest echo of what we were talking about during the trial was when he was earlier talking about how he didn't want to return the calls from governors. He didn't want his vice president to return calls from governors that weren't saying nice things about him, that really weren't saying things about him that he could then turn into campaign commercials, as indeed he has. Uh, that was such a profound and disturbing echo of what he tried to do with Ukraine. So sadly, you know, as we pointed out during the trial, a man with no moral compass will never find his way, and this president certainly hasn't. Yeah, so he's there basically saying the, the president legal is fatal. foundation for their second impeachment right there. Is, did you hear that, where he says it is an echo of what he did in Ukraine? So yes. Basically, they're going to say he abdicated his responsibility by, you know, going and saying some of these things, which is an interesting, because there's still been a lot of debate. He's saying there was a quid pro quo in the Ukraine, and there's, and a there's quid also pro a quid pro quo with governors who said nice assistance. things to him. Yeah. Under, not understanding that in a system that is, you know, based on federalism, the states are sovereign and get to actually do what prepare they want. Yeah. and do what they want and buy the things that they want, and the federal government is there to assist as necessary, but this shows you how unprepared most states were. Certainly yeah. New York, for one. New York State was... New York State, yeah, was not in a position to handle any of this. And we've talked about this before, about how they actually had recommendations in New York State five, six years ago to be prepared with more ventilators and more equipment, but they decided not to follow the recommendations. Yeah, and even their policies afterwards, you know, putting, you know, people who tested positive and needed to self-isolate into nursing homes and the fatal you know, repercussions of decisions like that, so. And, and here's the thing, if you're Adam Schiff and you're on MSNBC and you're still saying at the end of the day that this pandemic, this pandemic is the, it's completely on Donald Trump's shoulders. He's responsible for everything. He's responsible for, the, for all responses. I mean, you've heard, Garrick, you've heard the press ask Donald Trump before, well, is there gonna be more testing available in the state of, choose Blank. a state. Arizona, yeah. any state you want to choose. It's up to them. And you have to say to yourself, look, the federal government is getting things kickstarted with these 
private and public companies that make test kits mm -hmm. and also process those test kits and then distribute those test kits. But what they're saying is, is well, Mr. President, are you going to be out there right on the side of Walmart, you know, testing people with a swab? It's like, no, that's not what a president does. That's what governors do. Yeah. And then governors, of course, delegate from there to the folks that are actually in the field to make sure it is indeed getting done. Yeah, and a lot of this lag also has to do with what, are we, what we're dealing with in general. We're talking about a new virus, something that we have never seen before. And so we don't just, we didn't magically have, you know, coronavirus testing kits sitting in our, you know, stockpiles for 10 years. First, we had to figure out how you can test for the virus <laughs> and then, you know, replicate that and then be able to scale down, you know, the time periods of, you know, to get results and things like that. So it wasn't just this like magical overnight thing where we can just drop, you know, 10 million tests in this state and 10 million in that state. I mean, you know, certain states have had to go and purchase them from overseas. And it's just one of the realities of the way it works. Now, you know, you can criticize the federal response. Do I think that there's room for criticism? Sure, Absolutely. for everywhere. Every voice should have criticism for how they've handled this. And, you know, we're going to have to do a, a post-op where we sit and we break down the whole thing and where we go Smart. wrong and where it's do we go forward with has things. has to be done. But, you know, I think there's a different fundamental way we approach something like that in a rational, level-headed situation as opposed to what you hear when people go on MSNBC or Fox and they say, you know, that this is this terrible thing that happened and Trump is to blame. End of discussion.